Chapter 13 Trapped by a Tiger Theme Animals Kickstart Ruskin Bond an Indian author of British descent is considered an icon among authors of children's books Read about the protagonist's gripping account of an encounter with the king of the jungle in a seemingly safe rest house at the outset, let me make it clear to the reader that I am no hero, either in fiction or in reality. I have never used a gun in my life, except on the shooting range at school, where I usually miss the target by several feet. Although I grew up in an age when hunting wild animals was a pastime that was supposed to prove one's manhood, I developed an early aversion to the so-called sport of kings. If my cousins and their friends called me a coward, I wasn't really bothered. The extent of their bravery seemed to depend largely on the size of guns they held. All the same, at age of 12, I was persuaded by one of my uncles to accompany him and his friends in a weekend's shikar in the forests near Dehra, a small North Indian town where my grandparents had settled. These forests were then fairly well populated by tigers, other big cats, wild elephants and various species of deer. They set up their headquarters at a small forest rest house in the heart of the jungle and from here the hunters set out early every morning, often on elephants returning late in the afternoon, well in time for the evening's whiskey soda. To avoid boredom, I had brought a couple of books along. The hunters did not press me to join them on their forays into the jungle, and I was grateful to them for that. I was left with sandwiches in a thermos of tea and told not to stray from the rest house. The caretaker, a retired forest guard, lived in a hut at the other end of the clearing, and I was to call out to him if I needed anything. It's perfectly safe here, said Uncle Jim. Just don't venture into the forest on your own. I was quite happy to see the hunting party march off into the jungle. They would be met by the elephants at another halt. I settled into an armchair on the veranda, read a little, ate a sandwich, kept one for later, and then, feeling drowsy in the hot April sunshine, dozed off. I must have slept for 10 or 15 minutes when I woke up. There was a strong smell of animal in the air. I did not have to look far to see where it came from. Standing in the middle of the clearing some 30 to 40 meters away and looking directly at me was a massive tiger, a monstrous tiger, I should say, because that was how it appeared to a 12-year-old. I know I wasn't dreaming because I could hear my heart thumping very loudly. The tiger was silent. It was watching me speculatively, perhaps certainly with interest, but not out of any feelings of friendliness. It had just been driven out of the forest by a bunch of noisy shikars, and it and it did not like the look of me, or perhaps it did like the look of me. Brunch, if not lunch, hadn't there been rumours of a man-eater terrorising the villagers in the next district? I got out of my chair very quietly, dashed into the living room, shut the front door and bolted it. I then went to the nearest window and peered out. The tiger had advanced a few paces. Raising its head, it sniffed at the air. It was obviously in charge of the situation. Where was that forest guard? Where were Uncle Jim and his great hunters? Never before had I felt so alone and so abundant. When I realized that I was staring out of an open window, I shut it quickly. It wasn't a very large window, not big enough for a tiger to get through, but I remembered that there were other larger windows in the building and the tiger had turned away from the veranda and was beginning to circle the house. Although confused and panic-stricken, I remembered that the back door of the bathroom had been left open. I left the living room and dashed into one of the bedrooms. 
they were two tumbled into the bathroom and shut the door with a bang the noise must have startled the tiger because he let out an angry ah oo na you know the kind of sound a hungry tiger makes you hear it often enough when you visit the zoo was the other bathroom door shut i raced across to the second bedroom there was a communicating door and into the bathroom the back door was shut bolted i was trembling almost crying with relief but how many doors and windows did that crazy bungalow have back in the bedroom i sat down on a bed and tried to pull myself together when i looked around i noticed that the bedroom window was half open and it was fairly large window without bars i crept up to it and peeped over the sill the tiger was in the backyard much closer to the house i could smell it its odor came to me on the breeze in horrid foul gusts a sickening odor and one that i shall never forget softly i closed the window and it bolted in softly i closed the window and bolted it this window had four panes of glass supported by wooden frames i was sure the tiger could smash through it but when i looked out i couldn't see the beast perhaps it had moved on seen something else returned to the forest i think i'm safe now I remember saying this to myself as I returned to the living room. Just then there was a heavy thump on the front door, followed by an angry snarl. I could hear the beast's claws rasping against the wooden door. I leapt to the barred window and put my face to the glass and was just able to see a portion of the terrible creature as it examined and tested the door of the bungalow. I was at my wits end shaking all over but I had to do something high up on the living room wall was a small skylight opening on the roof if I get get to it I could climb onto the roof I would be safe up there I pulled the dining table across the room then I placed a smaller table on top of it I he- I heaved a cane chair up on the edifice and climbed up on the wobbling chair meanwhile the tiger was making an awful din thrusting against the door with all its weight and tearing at the wood with its powerful claws i got the skylight open and climbed through i was out on the flat roof of the bungalow a good 30 feet above down level at the same time there was a tremendous crash as the door gave way the tiger 